So first, a little introduction. Uh, so I am Christian van den Ende. Uh, I work at Deason in the UK. And um, I've had quite some experience with Drupal, um, about eight years. I'm the maintainer of the group module. Um, I first wrote it for Drupal 7. Uh, Deason gave me the opportunity to do a full rewrite uh, for Drupal 8 during company time, so uh, thanks for that. I live near Antwerp in Belgium, and I'm a highly sensitive person. I always put that in my slides because I'm prone to hyperventilation, panic attacks, uh, just generally feeling bad. Uh, so I like to mention it to like open up to the crowd so that if I do start feeling weird or acting weird, it's probably that. So you don't need to worry. Um, it's like all alarms going off in my head, but you don't generally see it from the outside. Uh, so on D.0, uh, I'm very creative. I just use my own name as my Drupal handle. Uh, and on Twitter, I use uh, at Magentix. Yeah, so I'm uh, Jochem van Nieuwenhuizen. I uh, also work as a software engineer for a company called GoGorilla. Um, I have little over four years' experience with Drupal. Um, one of the maintainers of the Open Social project, and uh, it's my first time, so be gentle. Oh yeah, right. and on Drupal.org, I'm Jochem Veen, and on Twitter, I'm also that. Yeah. So um, before we get to Open Social, which is the distribution um, that was built using Group and several other modules, I'm going to give a short introduction to what the Group module is about, so that you all get an idea of um, its functionality, and then when Jochem presents Open Social to you guys, you can see it in action. Because um, like any module, if you use it out of the box with the Bardic team, it looks like shit. Uh, but Open Social looks really nice. So uh, that's why I have Joachim sitting next to me, because he's part of the team that made something that actually looks nice. Um, so Group is like a marriage of access and collections. It's a little bit of both. So when you have a regular Drupal site, all you have is your content and your users, and that's it. Your users are part of the access layer that defines who can do what. Um, but sometimes you want smaller sections within your site. You want like smaller communities, or you want people to only be able to perform certain actions on a small subset of the content. So this is where a group comes in. It allows you to create smaller groups and potentially put content within that group and then have people in that group being able to either view that content, edit that content, add new content, uh, control the members of that group, you can hide a group, you can make it public. So you can do all sorts of things, but the basic idea is that you can divide your website into sort of smaller websites. Um, and there are some advanced cases you can do, so when, when you push this to the limit, you can sort of create subsites, like smaller spaces that are available only to the people uh, within that space, but they are all coming from the same shared user base of that one Drupal installation. And if you want to go really far, you can slap URLs on those subsites, and then you really have a tool to build multi-sites, but still have that shared user base, which has always been a pain to pull off with you know, stock Drupal. Uh, so when should you be using group? So there are a handful of obvious use cases when you want to use group, and one of them is when you uh, want to split up your user base into smaller communities, like when you have a school. So schools have obvious hierarchies um, within them, like a classroom has a teacher and has students, but then above that you have a faculty, etc. So you can use groups to uh, divide your user base into such um, hierarchies and then assign teachers certain permissions over their students. You can also uh, use this for news desks where you have like uh, several uh, sections like sports, uh, lifestyle, and you only want a certain editor to be in charge of the content within his section so that a sports editor can't go and uh, write an article on the website about how awful Madonna's new dress looks. Um, you, you definitely don't want people uh, overstepping their bounds like that. Um, you can also use group to create a platform where content is only available to a handful of people. Think press area. So when you want to have press releases that can only be accessed by certain journalists, you can create a group called you know, press area and put downloads in there and they will only be visible to those journalists that are a member of that group. 
Um, and when you need to have more granular access control, you can use groups as well. So um, like when regular side trolls don't cut it anymore and you want to have a more fine-grained uh, difference between people that actually have the same role on the site level, you can use groups as well. Um, or you can combine them and go nuts and do all of the above. Um, so when shouldn't you be using group? And this is really important. Uh, I've had people send me emails with questions like, can I do this or that with group? And the answer is usually yes, but you don't necessarily want to do it. So what people have been asking me uh, basically boil down to, I want to um, categorize all of these nodes or these articles as you know, being parts of a specific or as part of a specific topic and then the answer is why don't you just use taxonomy like group is a very heavy module don't get me wrong it's a big module that tries to solve a very complex use case so it would be like shooting a mosquito with an elephant gun so uh, you can do it but it's not going to look nice on your walls um, so don't um, so uh, people also try to categorize people um, with group, but it's the same thing. Just use fields, slap on a taxonomy on users and be done with it. Uh, they also want to try and use it as another type of node, like uh, they, they field their groups and then they want to display content, but that's it. Then please don't use group, uh, use nodes. And then there's always these people, I love them. Um, like uh, Facebook sucks, I'm making my own. Um, so, um, yeah, the answer is hell no. Please don't use group for that. Um, either apply to Facebook or just drop the ID. Um, there's a reason that it's a billion dollar company and it's not because they use the Drupal module to build their website. Um, that said, please do send me these emails. They crack me up. Um, <laughs> I love them. It's like in a world where everyone tries to follow the norm, um, you know, being different is the only thing that's not boring, so really those people interest me. So keep sending me those emails. Um, just, you know, don't start trolling me and sending me those on purpose trying to see what response you get, because I'll start trolling you. Um, so here's a little visualization of the whole situation. And this is the thing that we all were taught in um, junior high school. Like, when you have Venn diagrams like these, um, I, could pre I could present this and tell you like, you know, you have the yes scenario on the left to you guys, you have the right scenario, and then there's this little gray area, like maybe you could use group, maybe not, it depends on the use case. But then reality hits you and it's more like this. So you have some clear cut cases saying, yeah, definitely use group for this. You have some clear cases that, you know, are definitely not intended to be used uh, with group. And then you have a large pool of potential use cases where you're like, eh, yeah, maybe you can use it, maybe you don't. Um, by the way, for anyone in the room who's used organic groups in the past, this slide applies to group versus organic groups as well. It's like group works really well for some cases, organic groups for other cases, and then it's all down to preference. So that whole section in the middle could be the same. I know it hasn't got a release for Drupal 8 yet, but people sometimes ask me, use whatever you want. Uh, so let me quickly explain a few key concepts in group. Um, so groups inherit from group types. This basically means like when you have nodes, like content, um, they inherit from the node type, right? So you have your articles and pages. So every article you create has the same fields that you specified for the article node type. Um, so it's the same in this case. So groups inherit from group types like nodes inherit from node types or content from content types is what it's called for site builders. Um, so all groups follow the same set of rules defined by their group type. So I have more information on that coming next. Um, and aside from that, just like notes, just like articles can be unique with the content they have within them, like they have a different article body, groups can be unique as well. They can have their own content, but they can take it a little step further. They can have you know, their own members. Two groups don't necessarily need to have the same members, obviously, and they can have their own uh, field data as well. Like a node can have different fields, a group can have different fields as well. So what are these rules defined by a group type? So first and foremost, uh, group types define what ki uh, kind of content can be added to groups of that type. So you can have uh, groups that only allow for articles, um, and you can have uh, groups from a different type that only allow for downloads and 
you can configure them whatever way you want. You can also have multiple uh, content types within one group. It's just do whatever you want. Um, it also defines who can do what within a group. So there's this permission layer to it where you can define group roles and you can assign permissions to those roles, just like the global permission system in Drupal. Um, and those apply to all groups. So this is a very important concept to keep in mind. Like all groups follow the rules set out by their group type. Um, so this has the benefit that when you're a site builder and you configure a group type and you say, you know, members can do this, admins in a group can do that, you're sure that no one will ever be able to do anything that you didn't want them to do. All groups follow those rules. There's no per group overrides. Uh, and yeah, just like content types, as I said before, it also defines what fields are available, so what data you can actually show when you display the group itself. So the group permission layer um, is a little bit different to the regular one in uh, Drupal core. Um, so the, the interface definitely looks the same for now. Uh, I'm going to spice it up a little bit because I'm actually not too happy about the one in core. Um, it doesn't really help but with group. There's too many permissions. So I'm going to make that look a little nicer before the 1.0 release. Um, but there are three audiences, and this is an important concept as well. Like when you have a Drupal site, you actually only have two audiences. You have anonymous and you have authenticated. Anonymous is basically, well, you don't have an account. Authenticated is you do. Within the authenticated audience, you can have roles, but they're still all the same. They are still all people who have an account. So that is what I like to call an audience. So group has three audiences um, because it differentiates between anonymous users. They have very few capabilities within a group because they don't have an account, so we can't keep track of them. So anonymous is still anonymous. But then authenticated, I like to call outsiders, because then we have two people within the regular authenticated user audience that actually behave differently based on the fact whether they're in a group or not. So um, suppose like in this room, you're all authenticated users. You all have this awesome badge which allows you to enter the room. But there are people on the right side for me, of the room, and people on the left side. So that could be two groups. So even though you're all authenticated users in this room, the left side it, are outsiders to the group on the right. And the people in the group on the right are members of that group. So even though you're all authenticated users, as, for, as far as Drupal is concerned, as far as that group is concerned, you guys are outsiders, you guys are members. So group introduces a third audience called members. Um, so, um, there, uh, unlike on, in Drupal, where you can assign permissions to just any audience, in group, it's a little uh, bit more limited because some permissions don't make sense when you assign them to a certain audience. So, a great example is when you want to join a group. Um, it doesn't make sense to assign that to a member. They're already part of the group. It's like, you guys are in this room. You're already part of this room. So, if I were to tell you, you're free to enter this room. That wouldn't mean shit because you're already in this room. So it doesn't make sense. So group doesn't allow you to assign certain permissions to certain audiences because they just don't make sense. And it would just cause a button to appear that wouldn't really do anything. Um, and just like on the global Drupal website install where you can um, divide your authenticated users into multiple like sub audiences with roles, group allows you to do the same to the member audience. You can assign permissions to a group admin, which is a group role. So here are the three audiences. So um, I'm just quickly going to give you a, a little overview of which hard-coded rules ship with group. So first of all, you have you know the anonymous audience. It's just the anonymous role. It's very easy like that. Then you have the outsider audience, which I just explained. It comes with an outsider role, so when you assign permissions to that role, it applies to those people. Um, and I just went way too far. Okay, so I'm going to keep this slide. Um, so for the outsider audience, uh, also any global site role appears in that, but in a separate UI. So it's for an edge case, but if you want your global site admins to be able to administer on groups without having to join them, you can use uh, the outsider role that syncs 
uh, with the global site admin role. So every site role gets synced to an outsider role, but those are hidden in a separate UI because it's an advanced use case, but they are there. And then you have the member role, which is like the catch-all role. So when you have authenticated user in Drupal, any permission you assign to it applies to all global roles. Same goes for the member role. Any permission you assign to the member role assigns to any role you may define after that point. And as you can see by the arrow, you're free to add any roles to um, the member audience as you see fit. So uh, this thing is going. Ah, I see it. The button's a little sticky. Um, so um, when you want to add content to groups, so this is the last concept that you need to be aware of before um, I hand over to Jochem to show you how awesome Open Social is. Um, so as I said earlier, I, I, I scratched the surface. You can choose what content is available to a group type. So you can say that only articles are available to a group type or only pages or all of them. So the way you do that is um, you configure it on the group type by installing a plugin, which sounds really weird, but it's just you press a button and then you get a configuration screen and ta-da, it works. Um, and the, the things those plugins do is they actually, um, they, they first of all, they tell the groups that um, you can put that content inside of them, but it also tells you how that content should behave when put inside of a group. So in case of the group node sub submodule that ships with a uh, group, um, it tells you that when content is within a group, you can control access. Like you can define whether people outside of the group can view it, who uh, as a member can create it. So it defines the rules. Um, group ships with two of them so far, group membership and group notes. Group membership allows you to add users to a group um, and then assign roles to those members. Group notes obviously allows you to add notes or content to a group. Okay, so um, but group also tracks the relation between the entities you put inside of a group and the group itself. So um, those are called the relation entities. They have a horrible name in the code base, but in my slides I call them relation entities. Um, and they are fieldable as well. So when you add a user to a group as a member, there is already one field on there that allows you to select the roles, but you can add multiple fields to that. So if that is not enough for you, you can ask members when they join for their bio, for their nickname. So if you have a gaming clan website, you can ask for their in-game in handle or something. Uh, you can do the same when you add content to a group, but I found that generally people don't care about that, and they started complaining that I forced them to go through that screen. So now I put a toggle in uh, that allows you to um, disable that. So when it doesn't make sense for you to have to fill out a relation, you can disable that at your own risk. So if you didn't field it, it's fine. If you did field it, well, people are not going to see that screen and those fields won't have data, but that's up to you. Um, I hate myself for putting toggles like that in the module because the more freedom you give users, uh, the more pain you suffer as a developer. Um, but um, yeah, I'm still thinking on, on this and maybe one day I'll find a great solution that doesn't even require a toggle and just works for everyone. But right now it's a toggle. Um, so yeah, examples where the relation matters, as I just said, members, examples where it usually doesn't matter, nodes, although there are use cases, so I do keep the functionality in. One use case would be a book club, uh, where the admin of the book club adds book notes to the group, and then they have a field on the relation saying, you know, why do I want to add this group, uh, this book to my group, because I think it's awesome or whatever, so then the relation does make sense. Uh, so that should be it. So let's have a look at Open Social. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, what is Open Social? Open Social uh, is like how we like to call it, it's a full featured uh, Drupal 8 distribution. Um, you can find us, our project page, on uh, drupal.org slash project slash social um, or on uh, getopensocial.com. Um, why did we build it? We build it to make uh, online communities. That's what it's primarily built for. Um, some of the key features that we have is that it, it's fully responsive when you install it, the vanilla version. It's, it has an activity stream. It has on-screen notifications, uh, events, and obviously group. So I have a small video to show you guys. So let me quickly press it.
So if you, um, if you install Open Social, this is actually what it looks like. In this case, it comes with a module that installs demo content, so I've installed it in this case. And this is what the anonymous homepage looks like when you installed it. So you can see on top there's a, there's a big header. Um, this is all customizable, obviously. Um, you have your uh, welcoming text for the community and your, uh, your, your uh, inevitable call to action buttons that are always there. Um, you can sign up, log in. You can just customize this to anything you want. You can lead your users to anywhere you want to. So in this case, I'm, uh, I'm going to quickly log in. Okay, now we're on the logged in user homepage. Um, this looks a bit different, obviously. Um, we have a menu on top, which uh, isn't there for the anonymous users. Um, we have the home button, so you can go back home normal. We have an explore menu, where you can explore the community, where you can see all relevant uh, in, uh, content in the community. Um, and overviews of all groups, events, topics, and, uh, and members that are uh, in the community. Next to that, we have the search button, so you can just search for any type of content you have access to. Uh, and then on the right side, there's, uh, there's more like the, the action part, so there's the plus symbol. Using the plus symbol, you can add new events, you can add uh, new topics, and of course, you can add new groups here. So, and next to that, we have another button, that's the My Group button, where you can go to uh, your page with all the groups that you, are, that you have joined. So in this case, it's only one. You can see the amount of members that are in that group. Next to that, we have uh, the notification center where you have like an, an on-screen notification. So you, you, you already saw that there were like three unread notifications. You, know, you can't really see on the screen, but they have a, a slightly different background so you can see that they're unread. If you click on one of them, for instance, this is that someone liked my post. Uh, I put on this post of my uh, holiday, so it's pretty awesome. And you can see at the top left that there's one like, so someone liked my photo. If you click on it, you can see, hey, Chris Hall liked my post. That's pretty cool. Uh, and then next to the notification center, you have the, the personal setting menu. Uh, in it, there's like uh, the overviews. Uh, you can go to your profile. You can see your events, the ones you created or the ones you enrolled in. Uh, you can see the topics you created, the groups you've, uh, you're, uh, you're a part of. Um, Settings is for editing your Drupal profile, uh, and the profile is for editing the profile module uh, that we have attached, attached to it. And of course, also you can uh, log out there. Now, if we take a closer look at the, at the home page, on the left side, you, you already saw a little bit that there's a, an activity stream, a timeline uh, thing going on there. Um, on the home page, you get sort of like personalized uh, information there. So what you see there is content that is potentially interesting to you. So it could be posts from, um, from in the, within the community, uh, topics from within groups that you have joined. Um, so here you can see it's a topic. A topic is in, in open social. A topic is like a blog or a discussion or a news item. And we've categorized them into one uh, node type. Um, also, you just saw the posts. We also have events. So here you have an event. Um, you can see where, when the event is taking place. Uh, also, the location of the event. This is just a text. You can also add geolocation, stuff like that there. If we scroll up again, then on the right side, you can see there's a, uh, also a little bit, uh, some blocks on the side. So the first one, the, those are your upcoming events. So the events you've enrolled in, the ones you're going to attend. Um, below that, we have uh, the upcoming events in the community. So that's basically all the events that are still upcoming in the, in the, in the community, regardless of whether you're going to attend them or not. On the, below that, some, uh, some topics. So these are just all the, the latest topics that have been added to the community, so regardless whether they're interesting to you or not. And the groups, it's also just all the groups that have been added to the community, and also the newest members, so the people that uh, just uh, signed up for this community. Okay, so why did we build Open Social? A couple of years ago, we built a, uh, a website for Greenpeace, for the Netherlands uh, Department of Greenpeace, where they want to engage their volunteers, volunteers more 
so they wanted to uh, have like a bottom-up organization where the volunteers could you know um, create their own action stuff they wanted to do um, later the international Greenpeace also saw this community and they said I we want this as well so we built a multi-domain multi-group uh, multilingual site for them uh, runs in over 20 countries, has like 25 languages and loads of groups in them. Lots of people uh, uh, engage in the community, big community, big user base. Uh, we, we won an award with that one in, uh, in, in the Netherlands, the Dutch Interactive Award. It's a pretty big thing in, in the Netherlands. And of course, after that, everyone wants the community. So who are you going to call? So they called us and, well, we couldn't just say, okay, here's the Greenwire community, we're just going to put it on your doorstep and have fun with that, because it was way too customized for Greenpeace. It, was, it had so many Greenpeace features, you, you couldn't just put it somewhere else. So we came to think, okay, we have to build something more generic, so this is how we actually came up uh, with building Open Social. And why do we have groups in Open Social? So why do we use the group module? Christian always gets angry with me when I say groups because it's actually group module. Sorry. Yeah, so, so if anyone says groups from this point on, um, I'm going to hunt you down. You've heard him. <laughs> Thank you. So the group module, sorry about that. First is uh, organic groups. So we had some experience with uh, organic groups because in Drupal 7 we use it for the Greenpeace Greenwire project. Um, you know, at the time that we had to make this decision, there was no, not really an uh, organic groups. There still isn't uh, an official release of the module. So, also our uh, experience with the with the interface was not that good. So we thought, okay, maybe we should switch to groups, group. And then it turned out to be that the architecture also was a little bit more how we uh, saw that it should be. So that's basically the reason uh, why we chose to use a group module. Okay, and how does this look in Open Social then? So when you install Open Social, you get two group types out of the box. So we have the open groups and the closed groups. Um, open groups are free to join for all members of the community, so you have to be like a member of the community to join the groups. And closed groups cannot be joined by members of the community. You have to be added to the group by the group member, uh, group manager, sorry. And both group types have uh, pre-configured settings for permissions, uh, group content, uh, so what kind of content can you add to the group. Um, there's a couple of roles predefined, so you can assign these roles to members if you want to. Uh, and obviously content visibility, which is the main distinction between open and closed groups. For uh, content placed in closed groups will not be shown in the timeline if you're not a member of the group. So next up, I would like to show you a small video I made, and which is about group in open social from a site building perspective. So what I'm basically going to show is how you can manage group types, how you can create a new group type, how you can uh, manage permissions, add permissions there, also add uh, content types that you want to be av have available in the group. And Yeah, so I'm logged in as an admin, and I'm going to uh, the group types, um, where you can see the two pre-configured uh, group types that we already have there. I'm just going to add a new one. I'm going to call it uh, the Drupal group. Just put some description there, so that's basically groups that are only about uh, Drupal. Uh, you can already see the the the. Sorry, I can't really see it myself. The, yeah, so if you, there's a couple of settings you can do. There's also the, sorry, I'm going to go back there. All right. So if you, the setting if you want to become a member automatically, uh, if you want to complete your membership, this just has to do if you field the membership and you have to fill out some extra fields when you become a member of the group. So we're not going to check that in this case. Uh, and also the administrative role is not important uh, now. So we just created a group type. You can see it uh, over there. It's shown up in the list. Mm. 
Now we go to the, to the side and then we're going to manage the content types uh, that are going to be available in, uh, in this group. So you can just go to set available content. You see all the plugins that are, that are there. In this case we're going to install the event plugins that was for Node. Here we can say to how many groups can an event be connected. In this case it's only one. And now we've added the Node event type to this group. So basically we can now uh, add events to the group. So we have to set a couple of permissions. There's one setting on the, on the general permission overview that you have to set because there's a specific setting for a group type. So this one is uh, pretty important if, you, if your anonymous or regular users can create uh, this group type. So we set that one. Mm. Now we're going to go back to the group type permission page. And on the group type permission page, you can set a lot of other settings. So here's the three, uh, the three audiences that Christian was talking about, the anonymous, the outsider, and the member. Um, like he said, you can just add new uh, types uh, of roles if you want to. We're not going to do that in this case, but if you look at the pre-configured group types, you can see that we have uh, another, another uh, role there that you can also assign some more uh, permissions to. So in this case, we're just going to make sure that everyone can join the group, um, that anonymous people can uh, view the group and view content in the group. So basically, it's just a, a copy of the open group that we're going to create here. Um, yeah, I have to do, make some settings for the, for the content types as well to make sure that people can create uh, the events in the group, um, that they can post in a group. A post is, is an entity in open social that you can just quickly post something that's a little bit like a Facebook post. What happened? Okay. So I've saved the settings here. Um, now I'm going to switch to, to another user. I'm going to log in as a regular user. So log in as the user I've, uh, I've logged in as before. That didn't happen. All right, so now I'm going to, you have the same overview again. You have the toolbar, everything else. I'm just going to add a new group here. And you can see that you can now add a Drupal group. So in this case, I'm going to create a Drupal group. You just give it a title because I didn't, f I didn't add any fields to the group type. We did that in open social with the pre-configured type. We added some about sections and stuff like that. Didn't do that now. But you can just you know, add any fields that you want. So now you can see that you have like your own stream, so your, your, your um, website within your website, basically. Um, you can see that there is a member section. Uh, there's an event section. There's no events yet. I'm going to create one now. So I'm just going to add an event, make sure that it's, uh, that it's in a group. So you just fill out your, uh, your type of nice image for the header. Yeah, for an uh, event, you add, uh, of course, you have like a start date and a start end date. And of course, also the time. You can also select the location based on the geolocation. I'm not going to do that now. In this case, I'm just going to put in some location name, so for the sake of uh, having the field filled out. Fill out some text, and we're good to go. All right, so now I've added my first event to my Vienna group. Or, um, and you can see on top there, you can see that uh, I'm going to circle that around. First I'm going to, sorry, first I'm going to enroll in the event. So now you can see that some people have enrolled in the event. You can also see on the, on the enrollment tab that I've enrolled. Um, on the sidebar here, you can see also in the newest groups in the community that the Vienna group is now there available. And if you go back to the group, you're on the stream of the group, and you can now see that your activity stream now also shows that you created an event in the group. Other things you can do is like making posts in a group, like if you have like a small photo you want to share with your audience, with your group. You can just share a photo there and you can see if that is immediately added to the timeline of your group. 
And since this is an open group, so basically the, 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 everyone has permission to view it, you can also see it on the timeline on your, on your homepage stream. So you can see here that the content is immediately visible on the homepage stream, the groups there still, and also the, the event is gonna be shown up there on the side as well. So this is basically how quickly you can add a group type, set permissions, add content types, and you're basically good to go. So, next, I think you're, you're yeah, first. Yeah, it's, I'm up now. So, um, so I, I quickly want to discuss what, what's next for, uh, for group. Um, so, uh, I'm going to be adding uh, new features and I'm going to do some refactoring, but seeing as we now have a release candidate and there are a few bug reports, I'm first going to focus on a full release. Uh, main reason being full releases are covered by the security team, um, so I become their problem from that point on. Um, and, but there are a few items that I still want to add, and one of them is the permissions UI. I want to clean it up a little, and I also want to do a, a few, uh, a few, you know, I want to tidy up the user experience just a little bit as well. I, I, I want to make it feel more natural. So uh, one of the main concerns I still have is that you can't uh, view a, a grouped node yet within the context of a group. Um, I want to fix that before 1.0. Should be easy enough, but that will improve site builders' uh, enjoyment of the group module a lot. Um, so obviously, like any release, there's also going to be bug fixes and adding more tests and whatever. Um, so this is scheduled to be finished by the end of this year. Um, I have a lot of time on my hands uh, to work on it over the next quarter, so that should be uh, finished by then. Um, in 2018, I'm going to start work on 1.1, and I'm going to add some uh, commonly requested features, such as subgroups, like putting groups within groups. It's already possible if you write a code, but that answer doesn't help site builders. So um, I'm, I'm going to try and uh, you know collaborate with the people who've been working on that so far. They have a working patch, but it needs some cleaning up before it can go into group. Um, I'm going to uh, improve the performance because uh, right now group uses the node access system, which is like a special uh, snowflake within Drupal. Um, all other entities don't get it, nodes do. It's ridiculous and it can really do a number on your site performance when used with a module like group or organic groups. Um, so that kind of sucks. So I want to uh, make the performance as good as it gets before we uh, work on a core issue to actually remove that node access layer because it doesn't make sense. Uh, and then uh, at the same time, I want to work on group 8.2, um, um, like uh, a second version. So it, it will be, uh, it will have an upgrade path because there won't be that many changes for site builders, like hardly any. Um, but it will uh, require um, module maintainers to adjust their code just a little bit. Um, it's mainly going to be an API cleanup. So I started building group when Drupal 8 was just released. I still uh, needed to teach myself quite a bit about Drupal 8. I'm really proud about certain parts, like cache context. I've, I really have the feeling that I've written those perfectly, but I also have some uh, oopsies in there, like some really nasty codes. Um, like, I mean, what the fuck is even a group content enabler? Who knows? Like, it doesn't make any sense. I, I could have just as easily called my classes I see dead people, and it would have made just as much sense. So, um, yeah, in hindsight, that wasn't the best choice. So I really need to fix that. And because that would break backwards compatibility, I can't do that in a 1.x release, so it's going to have to become 2.0. Um, and uh, similarly, when we do get entity access in core, I'm not going to bother getting that into 1.x because that would you know, mean removing all of that nasty node access stuff. So um, I'm going to try and land entity access. There's a buff on that tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to sprint on it on Friday. I'm going to try and land an entity access MVP in core, uh, hopefully somewhere next year. And that should really improve uh, group 2 the low, because then you could even add stuff like commerce products and define access on those too, so that uh, grouped products can only be viewed by certain people, hence only bought by certain people. So that should really kick ass, but we haven't got it yet. So hopefully, like next year, fingers crossed. Yeah, and as for open social, uh, we also have uh, a lot of stuff on the roadmap. So uh, requesting memberships, inviting people to groups, uh, 
secret groups, so that are totally not visible. Uh, stuff like the most active groups in the community and um, st also archiving groups that are no longer really used or, or stuff like that. Then. So, yeah, um, mandatory slides, uh, <laughs> like always. So basically, uh, a few things we want to mention, like uh, both decent and open social uh, are recruiting. So if like building custom modules, working on core, or just doing agency work is really your thing, um, have a chat with us or uh, tweet at Decent Labs. Uh, likewise, for open social. Yeah, if you want to work for a more product-oriented company, then uh, reach out to us on uh, Open Social HQ. Yeah, and we both have a buff about our part of the talk. So mine's today at um, 15.45, and it's uh, open to site builders and developers. It's basically, um, come tell me about everything that annoys you about group. That is essentially the buff. It's just me sitting there taking notes and going like, hmm, you have a point. Or, uh, yeah, I'm going to smile at you, but ignore everything you say. It depends on what you have to say. Um, so, yeah. And then uh, Open Social still has a buff tomorrow. Yes, that's mostly about how to use Open Social as a distribution. It's uh, tomorrow at, I think, tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Yes, it's quarter to 11 and uh, galleries. Oh, yeah, oh, we forgot the date. Yeah, so Open Social is tomorrow. So. Um, if you feel like contributing, like this has been a theme for the past uh, months or years now, like you don't need to be a coder to contribute. If you have an awesome use case, or a very common use case that either of us missed, and you're like, but I can't fix it with group or open social, come tell us. Like we're, we're not almighty, we don't have every possible use case in mind, so please come tell us and we may actually uh, be able to work together on something and, and get it in there. Oh, yeah, and then, uh, of course, more mandatory slides. So uh, join us for the contribution sprint. So um, wrong audience, because this was aimed at site builders. Um, but I'm guessing same goes. Like, if you have awesome ideas, please come and contribute by providing us with awesome ideas. If you know how to code, please come and write some code. Yeah, uh, it's like, it's, it's, you know, people tend to think about sprinting like a bunch of people writing code, but it's more than that. Like, there's several ways to contribute. Um, it's just, yeah, whatever. Like this slide wouldn't probably even make sense in a core, co whatever. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, I tend to do that sometimes. I just tend to drift and uh, talk out loud when I should shut up. Um, oh, uh, one more thing that's probably not in the slides. Yeah, so, oh no, it is. So uh, next one is what did you think? Uh, so we're always supposed to ask people to uh, leave notes on the uh, session, like um, tell us what you thought of it, uh, grade us, whatever. Uh, last year, funnily enough, I, um, so I had a session on something totally different last year. I told people that I really don't care about this. If you want to do it, that's fine. If you don't, that's also fine. Uh, and I got a uh, metric ton of reviews. Uh, <laughs> So it must be like reverse psychology or something. So if, if you do want to leave one, that's awesome. Uh, and do me a favor, if you really don't care and you feel like dicking around, just write a haiku or, or something. Like just put something in there. Let's go for the record. Right? So last year I asked you to do nothing. Now just put down anything. Uh, let's see how far we can get. Um, and that's basically it, right? Unless you have something to say. Jochen? Yeah, well, I think we still have like 14 templates uh, to go through. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> yep. I think we have some room for questions. Oh, yeah, so. right. Sorry, totally forgot about that. Questions, please step up to the microphone. So um, it's on the recording. Yeah. First of all, thank you for a great uh, session. Very interesting. Um, I have two questions. The uh, first one is uh, regarding um, uh, group module and the upcoming uh, features for that. I saw you mentioned um, uh, subgroups there. Mm -hmm. And I um, was just wondering if you could say a bit about that uh, uh, in terms of um, um, are you thinking that um, it would, uh, the, the ideal scenario for that is that you have like a master group with a couple of subgroups to that? Or are you thinking that it could be like a, a full hierarchy? Um, yeah, so. Um it's supposed to be uh, unlimited, so it's supposed to support a full hierarchy. Um, like, take a school, for instance. It 
goes way beyond just the class with uh, students, but then you have a faculty, and then exactly. you have like a campus, and then you have the board, and whatever, and whatever. So uh, the, the way it's supposed to work, and the way I actually wrote it in Drupal 7, but it's really unmaintainable to write it that way in uh, Drupal 8, uh, by which I mean the code sucks, um, is that um, you can nest groups indefinitely, and uh, depending on uh, how high you are of the hierarchy, you will inherit memberships. Yeah. So for instance, a, uh, a, a staff of faculty would have a lot of permissions in all of the classrooms without exactly. having to manually join them, because it would just trickle down like a waterfall effect. Yeah. Um, so that is the main challenge, and um, that should be possible to pull off in group eight. It will just require a lot of thinking, because obviously uh, the node access system is already really heavy and taxing on the site performance. So once we add even more logic that you could have possibly inherited memberships from all over the place, that's going to be even more taxing, which is really why we need entity access in core, because that would use a totally different approach, which would work perfectly with this. It would be really performance. Um, but sadly, node access isn't. So, um, yeah. but yeah, it will support the full hierarchy. Yeah, that's, the, that's the main idea. Yeah. yeah, that was the exact use case. Uh, thinking about the universities and, uh, and uh, yeah, that. Um, yeah. The second question is related to. Uh, uh, I saw that the, in Q4 there was a, uh, a plan for uh, working on big pipe uh, support in Open Social, and uh, sounds like a very good use rate, uh, use case for uh, for things like that. But that. I was on a session uh, yesterday about the uh, big pipe, and uh, uh, basically there was uh, no configuration needed. There were things to just work out of the box. So I was just wondering if you could say a bit about uh, what kind of work would need to be done there, and how we're planning to do that. Well, I think we experimented with it a little bit, and for us it didn't really work. It, 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 it there was you know nothing going on, and we were like, okay, we can turn it on, but yeah, we we're not 100% sure what it does. So. We really want to look into that before we enable such a feature on, uh, on a distro. So um, to add to that, basically Big Pipe works out of the box. You can just turn it on and it works. But it works um, like there is no gain in performance when the code isn't optimized for it. But when you write your code, which allows for uh, dynamic placeholders, like um, late rendering, then you start seeing a difference. So um, yes, you can turn on Big Pipe with Open Social, and you probably won't see anything. But once Open Social starts optimizing their code for it, then you will see a huge difference. And that explains why they can't just support it out of the box. They need to actively adjust their code. Where do you need help? So if you got an army of contributors tomorrow, what would you point them at? So For both of you. Yeah, so um, with regard to groups, a group is like the, the sort of uh, box of Legos that you use to build something. So um, mainly, like, what would you like to build with it? Because I always fall back to the same scenarios, like schools, uh, news uh, desks, stuff like that. But if you have other use cases, come tell me. Um, if you're struggling with the module, like I'm trying to do this, but it doesn't work that way, come tell me. I may have an answer for you why it's not working, but I may also be you know, stunned by the fact that the module doesn't support it and uh, create an issue saying, okay, we need this. So come tell me. Um, and well, if, you're, if you happen to be a developer and you think some code could be optimized, come tell me as well. It's just like, IDs, the, the whole thing is we need IDs. Uh, this is what modules are built on. People's needs to do something or to be able to do something and how they would like it to be. If, if you think the user experience in group sucks, come tell me, I won't be offended. I'm like very hard to offend. Um, you, can, you can, yeah. Yeah, but see, now I know you're trying, so I'm not offended. Like, so um, it's, um, it takes a lot to offend me. Um, because I, I really appreciate criticism. Like, if you disagree with me, that's fine. It's conversations with people who disagree with you that are actually the most interesting. Otherwise, we're just cheap in an echo bubble. And so. Yeah, I think for us it's uh, it's the same. You know, if you if you have an issue, come up to us and uh, and, and tell us. Because, uh, like Christian said, there's a lot of use cases we cannot think of. We have like this vision of how we want to use open social, but there's so many other use cases out there that we just cannot think of. And yeah, let us know, it's very interesting. Uh, 
Hi, it's Taco from Open Social. Um, <laughs> first of all, I want to thank you for your time you put in uh, in the um, group module. <laughs> Say it correctly. I think it's a great uh, example of how two different companies in different countries can work together on something. So, yeah, I think it's a great example for Drupal as well. Um, you guys skipped over the differences between organic groups and group quite fast. So Dries mentioned it in this keynote yesterday that there's a lot of help needed for organic groups. So why do you think he mentioned that? And, and can you say a bit more maybe about the differences between these two modules? Because I think there's a lot of people having this question. Okay, so there's two questions here. One is why was organic groups in Dries' slides? Um, the answer is probably very simple. Um, organic groups um, used to have a lot of users, reported users on Drupal 7, 6, 5.4, whatever. Um, it goes back a long time. So on Drupal.org, if you um, add all of those together, they are nearing like 30,000 reported installs. Um, and group has only been around since Drupal 7 as you know a, a proof of concept to see whether we can come up with an alternative. And in Drupal 8, it's more fine, you know, it's more polished already. So group currently has um, 3,000 something like that installs on Drupal 8, um, and organic groups has 50 or something because it doesn't have a full release yet. So my guess, like I'm, I'm I can't know for sure, but my guess, and I think it's a fair guess, is that. They ran a query on Drupal.org looking for all the modules that had a very large user base and don't have a Drupal 8 release yet. And then they just listed them because all of the ones on those slides don't have a Drupal 8 release yet. And they were big modules back in the day, so they potentially could be now. So um, I'm actually really curious to see what will happen when organic groups get a, uh, gets a full Drupal 8 release to see whether it still goes up to 30,000 or people prefer a group or I don't know. Um, and then, you know, the difference. Um, so I need to be careful here because I promised myself that I would no longer bash other people's work um, because that's just bad karma. And I think it would be unfair. Um, but the main difference between a group and organic groups, like there are several. Like, there, are, there is UX, there is UI, but the main difference is how we treat the data. So a uh, group has a dedicated data structure to add stuff to a group. So you have a group, you have whatever you want to add, like a user as a member or a node as content, and then you have that relation in the middle. So it's all built to be dedicated. So groups are built as a dedicated thing to represent groups. That relation is built as something dedicated to connect the two together, and then you know you have everything else that Drupal or modules provide. Um, organic groups does it differently. So they use existing data structures, and they add some magic fields to it to then you know, tell something that it's a group. It's basically just you know, slapping some, uh, on someone a label saying, hi, I'm Joe. That's what organic groups basically does. It just tells someone you're a group now. Um, and, and it has it merits for some use cases. Um, but it also has uh, quite a few drawbacks. And if you look at it purely from a, a data architect point of view, like I, I'm really confident that group handles it better. But it also means that. Sometimes I have to write some uh, really lengthy code to get something to work where organic groups could take a shortcut or vice versa. Because right now, uh, one of the things blocking organic groups from a full release is the fact that entity reference fields can behave weirdly sometimes. And because they're banking all of their stuff on entity reference fields, um, that kind of sucks for them. So, uh, I mean, no offense, <laughs> but that kind of sucks for them because um, entity reference is in core. And getting something fixed in core takes a longer time than getting something fixed in contrib. Um, and then it's just down to preference, whether you like groups UX more, uh, whether you like organic groups UX more, whether you like um, the UI better. Uh, that's just preference. But the main difference is how we treat the data. That's really important to know, because that will affect how you build your site or distribution or your uh, extending module. Anyone else? Hello. The, this question would be more for Open Social. Um, for, four years ago, everybody was like making its own social network. It was uh, something really fashionable, and uh, I've seen a lot of them. And uh, the question uh, is more on how do you think, with what the work you're doing, it would be possible in 
a future to join um, uh, social networks. I mean, if I'm making a fork social network and another one is making a knife social network, maybe in the future we would like to make a common social network or make them, I don't know, cross. And I don't know if this question has a sense for your work, but... Uh, yeah, do you mean that you want the... Uh, these two different platforms to communicate with each other, or do you want to? Yes, um, yes, something like that. I, I don't, I don't think that we currently have something like that on the roadmap. I think we talked about something similar like that yesterday, but that's maybe not for uh, use in a distro. But one thing to add to that is, if if you meant that you want to join two networks together, then that should be fine because that's what the migrate module is for. The data structure between one install of Open Social and another is exactly the same. So, if you want to make a new, fresh third install and move all of the content to that central one, that would be possible. Yeah, you can always build your own API and make it happen, but you know, you need a lot of uh, work there. Right, so unless anyone else has any questions, I guess that's it. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, Louis, it's been a while. Yeah, last time I saw you was in Barcelona, I guess, when we played. Uh, Exploding kittens in that box. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see you there. That's right. I had a talk last year on valid uh, How are you doing? Great. All right. Yeah, we're we're. Oh.